the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. so much let's pray father we bless you and we honor you we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple you have gathered us tonight to bless us and I pray that you will give us very mighty visitations tonight and we decree and declare that Jesus as always will be glorified in this place for in Jesus name I pray while standing, I want you to please help me honor your dear man of God and his wife. Thank you, Father and Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. I have, I have, I have profound regard and respect for people who are very deep in the spirit and yet garnished with a lot of humility. May the Lord bless you. I truly honor you and thank you. One of the ways you know that a man has met God is that you would see the absence of self that his entire being just reflects the glory and the grace of God and then please help me honor and bless my dear friend and brother Pastor Jakes and his dear wife thank you hallelujah when when Pastor Jakes told me about the, the stretch that has been happening in this ministry, I was very humbled. It takes a lot of passion for God and stamina in the spirit to stretch. It's one thing to fast for that long, then to pray in the morning and to pray in the evening. It takes more than desire. There is an engracing that must come upon a man. And I really truly salute this vision. It's impossible to give God this level of commitment and then not having atten his attention in an unusual way. So um, really my assignment is, I, I came to pray along with us. That, that's really, so I hope we we'll, we'll just pray, it's just to, to pray along with us. I believe in the ministry of prayer, but then I believe in effective prayer, prayer that works prayer that produces results hallelujah so um, what we'll do is I will just give a charge we'll pray give a charge we'll pray wherever we stop would that be fine so let's pray in the spirit for a minute or two and then we'll be seated when you pray in the spirit you open up your spirit man Shanamanakato Paracatosia, Imbr 
Rakata Barandos Cadilla Cafres and the Gadabella Catabrandos Yara Necaparus Catabrandas Cadilla Catabrus and the Gadabella Catos Awesome God How great Thou art chapter 18 and verse 1 let's start from there Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 Jesus was teaching and his character in his teaching ministry was to use parables um, when he was teaching to a mixed multitude he would usually use parables to explain the mysteries of the kingdom and this was a parable the bible says luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to this intent or to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint so jesus here whatever else he's saying is to buttress on this point showing the power of prayer that men ought always to pray and not to faint he encourages all men to pray not men in trouble not men in need he says the moment you realize you are a man it is part of the requirements to remain alive part of the requirements to remain effective he says all men not men in need not men in trouble god never prayed as god but when god became a man he prayed there is no record of god praying as god but when he became a man in the person of jesus he prayed even though the word he prayed and today because he ascended to heaven and he's seated as a man he still continues to pray making intercession for the saints prayer is for men not men in need not men in need of power not men in distress prayer is for men the idea that prayer is just an emergency strategy to solve problems is the reason why most believers are prayerless because the narrative that has been sold to believers for many years is that prayer is just an emergency mechanism that helps you to solve problems you see that in my opinion the highest expression of humility is to be prayerful prayerlessness is pride because it is proof that you are declaring self-sufficiency outside of the assistance of heaven when men pray it is an expression of deep humility before God in recognition that unassisted and by yourself we do not amount to much are we together so he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint second scripture Luke chapter 11 Jesus was confronted by his disciples over the subject of prayer and the Bible says it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. So you don't just pray, you are taught to pray. Effective prayer comes from a sound teaching ministry to understand the dynamics of prayer that produces power he said teach us to pray Luke 11 and verse 1 
just as john taught his disciples to pray now you must understand that in this scripture they were not prayerless people the issue was not prayerlessness the issue was inefficiency in prayer they noticed that there was a way jesus prayed that produced power and produced results they were not prayerlessness they were, they were not confronting the issue of prayerlessness they were prayerful people but their prayer was not producing results can i tell you it is impossible to remain indefinitely prayerful in the presence of consistent lack of results if you keep praying and praying and it does not produce results eventually your fire and your fervor will dwindle when people pray and their prayer commands results it is difficult for people to become prayerless under that condition the reason why our churches have people frowning at anything prayer is because subliminally over the years they have learned that this kind of prayer does not work so their refusal to come for prayer meetings is just a polite way of saying i do not believe in this hallelujah he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and now the disciples confronted him and they said teach us to pray let's see what he taught them in response to that question and he said unto them when ye pray this must be your approach to prayer are we ready now number one our father he's teaching how to pray and he's saying in approaching prayer the first thing is you must understand the person you are speaking to the revelation of the person you are speaking to can determine the entire construct of your prayer life he says when you approach god in prayer you must realize that he is our father the word father comes from the greek word abba it means source it means sustainer it means defender it means protector that means in approaching prayer if you have plan b then he's not abba abba means you must approach him with the consciousness that i do not have any other option i come to you as my source the source there does not just mean the beginning the originator that when you pray he's not just saying recite this as a chant he's saying approach prayer with this consciousness number one our father you are abba the fatherhood of god is is a very powerful component in effective prayer you must understand the fatherhood of god and jesus himself was teaching us about fatherhood and he said if you been evil remember that scripture matthew 7 from verse 7 when he was teaching on prayer ask and it shall be given seek you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you and he said for everyone that asketh receiveth for him that knocketh it shall be opened is that true and then and he says or what man is there of you of whom his son asketh bread and he will give him a stone he's confronting fatherhood now or if you ask for a fish he will give him a serpent verse 11 if ye then being evil do you know what he's saying he's saying by your nature you are evil and wicked people but even in that depth of wickedness there is still a provision to honor fatherhood that as wicked as you are you still have that sense of compassion that when your children confront you you can be excited to do them good even though you are wicked people then he says how much more shall your father so god's definition of father is not just one who has a son is one who is quick to give the ease of release is one of his definitions of fatherhood are we learning now so that when you approach prayer the fatherhood the consciousness of the fatherhood of god will give you the audacity to know that you will receive you can confront a deity and you're not sure as to his intent with respect to your request but he's saying this god you are approaching is father everybody say father, father. one more time say father. father it is very powerful the fatherhood of god 
if you being evil know how to give good gifts so when i approach god in prayer i am not praying to the warrior i am not praying to the lion of the tribe of judah he is all that but he is father are we together there are men here who are multi-dimensional all men a man can be a pastor a man can be a businessman a man can be and whatever dimension you approach is a dimension that is revealed to you are we together if i want to meet the ceo i have to go through the protocol of meeting the ceo and while i'm queuing in annoyance hoping for a chance to see him a young boy will run and pass everybody and run because he's not going to meet a ceo he's going to meet father are we together number two we're still examining luke 11 our father the second revelation on prayer that jesus taught them is which art in heaven that means in approaching effective prayer you will need faith because it's in a dimension that is not physical are we together now that understand that even though he's your father there is you are operating from a duality of realms you will on you will need to understand the component that connects the invisible and the visible our father who is not physically here with me that means i will need to understand faith in dealing with him you must approach that father in faith because you are dealing with a reality that is beyond the realm and the scope of science how am i sure that he's hearing me faith Hebrews 11 and verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto God must come having this consciousness number one that he is he exists and then number two he is a rewarder it's not what he does it's his name he is a rewarder he is he exists are we together then number three hallowed be your name I just want to touch on this very quickly and then we'll pray hallowed be your name that means don't get too familiar with his fatherhood that you forget that that father is still god you must approach with the spirit of reverence do not allow the consciousness of his fatherhood make you abuse it because you see even though he is your father he is god the consciousness of the fatherhood of god can give room for a lot of carelessness even in prayer like you see a lot of believers do but he said you must keep that component of reverence that even though he's your father he is god hallowed be your name the word hallow means to revere your office the name there means his office even though you are father i come with regard and reverence to that office then number four he says thy kingdom come this is powerful he's teaching them how to pray that in your prayer now he's beginning to make if you ever will ask anything it is that your kingdom come you know what this means the kingdom here refers to the fullness of the life the culture the sphere the kingdom represents every physical territory or every geographic definition where the influence of a king has been allowed to find expression it is called his kingdom so he says in prayer you must desire ultimately that his kingdom his culture his life his government let it come and he says let it come in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you you see that now that earthen vessel it says when you pray you must desire that your life becomes an effulgence of the culture the lifestyle of heaven your kingdom come your will be done this is how his kingdom comes everywhere his will is done his kingdom has come you see that now the kingdom of god the manifestation of the kingdom of god depends on his will being done everywhere his will is allowed to find expression his kingdom is made manifest in my life 
as the first earth and then my territory do you know why he's teaching you this he's teaching you that i know you have a lot of prayer requests but the reason why you even have prayer requests in the first place is the absence of the reality of the kingdom that if the revelation of the kingdom in experience finds expression you will not even need to ask the things you are about to ask that i will answer them but ultimately it is for your kingdom to come and your will being done and you will not need to talk about rent again you will not need to talk about trusting god for some miracle somewhere that those things are side effects of the kingdom not finding expression is someone learning now yes thy kingdom come how by your will being done in my life and in my territory then he says give us this day it tells you how powerful god's giving character is that he gives daily now let me tell you this it takes a lot of love to give daily to the same person he says do not be afraid have this consciousness that god is a giver but look at the extent of his giving he gives daily the government pays people monthly businesses pay people monthly investments pay people quarterly and annually but he's saying you are approaching a father who is a giver and the structure of his giving is that he gives daily that means just because he gave yesterday do not be afraid to ask again he is not going through insufficiency give us daily our daily bread you know what your daily bread is your daily bread is not food your daily bread is everything that makes for your efficiency per day everything the favor you need the relationships you need all of them are called your daily bread the purpose of bread is to keep you alive and fresh so all of the components i need within my space to make for my efficiency per day finances relationships are we together the engracing the favor give us our daily bread very powerful prayer is someone learning god gives and he gives daily give us our daily bread now this is a very powerful one and he says forgive us verse 4 our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us i wish i had time to deal with this he's saying you must understand that this same father is so benevolent it is within his power and with joy and excitement to grant you forgiveness for anything that can give satan a legitimate ground to accuse you and that while you do that reserve that consciousness and apply the same rule in dealing with men are we together now he said forgive us our trespasses the word there is not necessarily sin is the word trespasses our defaulting that which comes by reason of wearing a human body the limitations that come by reason of being human that in as much as we desire to walk in accuracy and perfection the fact that we are still evolving through transformation we will find ourselves defaulting not walking in perfect keeping with your principles and he's saying we are aware that you have created a provision in our dealing with you where your mercy would always prevail and he says that while we enjoy that reserve this in our consciousness that as we deal with people we will also meet people who are weak and limited that means when you pray effectively it leaves you with a responsibility also that the same way the father committed benevolence towards you you must be apt to communicate same to others forgive us our sins or trespasses for we also forgive all that are indebted to us and then it says lead us not into temptation king james did not do justice there because god does not tempt people with evil the bible says it looks like he's saying lead us not into temptation he's saying build a garrison around us and refuse to allow us by any means get into anything that would tempt us for our destruction that's the original expression of it it's not to lead like to woo you no god does not tempt any man with evil 
when he says lead us not into temptation he's saying create it is within your power to create a structure that defends us from moving into temptation he says nothing shall by any means hurt you you have to examine all the means that are available nothing shall by any means hurt you are we learning and then deliver us from evil then you read on so jesus was helping them to understand the formation of prayer that you pray to your father you pray by faith you approach him with the spirit of reverence and then that when you are praying your focus listen carefully your focus should not just be your needs your focus should be that his kingdom would find expression in your life because in truth i tell you when the kingdom comes and finds expression in your life by his will being done you will still remain prayerful but you will hardly have prayer requests again because when the kingdom comes like one of my dear people will say it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life so that at the end of your prayer life all that will be left is worship no more petitions because the kingdom has become the ultimate answer to those petitions are we blessed now let me just share with us and then we'll pray i've studied a bit on the subject of prayer and i found out that most believers really do not understand the purpose of prayer why is prayer such an important requirement to the believer why does god mandate us to pray why do we need to pray what is the assignment and the jurisdiction of the prayer ministry to the believer you see one of the ways that we gain stability in the kingdom is through understanding if i ask you for instance my dear people here if i ask you to sit down and just remain there as an instruction you will do it because you love me but you will be frustrated because there is no revelation that supports what you are doing it will become a burdensome ritual for you but if i ask you to sit down here because i've given someone a signal that when he comes whoever he finds sitting down here he should bless you the awareness of that revelation will give you the staying power to remain are we together now you understand what i'm saying so just merely telling people to pray will only make people loyal to a man of God or loyal to a religious sect but once you give them the revelation to see the necessity of prayer and the assignment of prayer let me tell you this it will surprise you to know this and I thank God that this is a ministry that is strong in revelation prayer is a major foundational key in this kingdom but it is not the only key I hope you know that by now Jesus said I will give you the keys of the kingdom so the prayer ministry has its jurisdiction and it has its assignment but prayer was so constructed I, I would always use this expression that when prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key so in any case you will still need to pray are we together but to just believe that prayer alone will solve all problems it may not be accurate because there are keys that are given in this kingdom are we together this auditorium has a number of doors as i can see just because you have the key to say the restroom does not mean you have the key to the office is that true if you need to use the restroom you'll be happy because you have the key that opens it but if you need to use the office then you are stranded although you are holding a key africa being a very superstitious and religious con continent we have a lot of regard for prayer and we do all kinds of things that we call prayer and we expect prayer to evolve into any key we need to open many doors and sadly we stand stranded before doors because we only have one key um, i'm going to be teaching you on the assignment the jurisdiction of prayer but then i want you to understand in truth wisdom is a key relationship is a key prayer is a key are we together he, when he gives you the keys of the kingdom 
then you handle these keys and you can open the various doors that need to be opened as far as your life and your destiny is concerned but now since we're dealing with the subject of prayer i want to show you something very powerful that the lord showed me um, from scripture what is the assignment of prayer and what is the jurisdiction of prayer i found from scripture that there are about four or five major assignments of prayer in the life of a believer let's run through them as we pray number one luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the first assignment of prayer and in order of priority this is about the most important assignment of the prayer ministry in the life of a believer transformation the real assignment of prayer in the life of a believer is not requests a means for obtaining requests the primary assignment of the prayer ministry is the spiritual mechanism that evolves you to superior dimensions of yourself so you can evolve to a dimension of you that was not yesterday the weak you can become the strong you the timid you can become the powerful you the undiscerning and carnal you can become the spiritual you and the process midwifing that the former you and this new you is prayer it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and the Bible says he went into a mountain to pray are we together now verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed are you observing this the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening through prayer this is what prayer achieves in the life of a believer transformation that happens through prayer believe me no matter what is wrong with your life subject yourself constructively to the ministry of prayer and watch yourself evolve into levels that will surprise you i have seen weak people become strong through consistent prayer i've seen people without discernment grow into certain appreciable levels of handling the gifts of the spirit and that's through prayer everybody say transformation yes. transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience it's called transformation the process that makes you become like christ in experience it says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you You can pray wrong things out of your life you can pray the virtue of the spirit to be at work in your life number two why do we pray prayer is the authorized platform as revealed from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises that every time you desire to make requests and to obtain promises the authorized the scriptural platform to make this happen is prayer mark 11 and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith then he said this therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when not if ye pray in prayer he says believe that thou receivest them so we receive in prayer and then you shall have it i'm sure that you know that there is a difference between receiving and having you only have what you have received you cannot have what you have not received receiving is a spiritual reality and then having is the physical manifestation you only have what you have received are we together very important the bible says when you pray among the many things that should happen in your prayer is that you receive everything god has given you receive in prayer and then you can have it philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 gives us the biblical cure for anxiety it says be anxious the word there is not careful the word there is anxious be anxious for nothing he says 
but in everything that means the prayer ministry covers every aspect of your life there is no aspect of your life that prayer cannot cover in everything he says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known have you read that in your bible he never said to assume that god knows let your request let the rent issue let the family issue let the issue in your job be made known unto god be anxious for nothing he says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known next verse and the peace of god this is one of the ways god answers prayers peace is a voice when he speaks his answer comes in peace he will speak peace to his people he says the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through jesus christ so we see that the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is to make requests and to obtain promises number three why do we pray what is the purpose of prayer in the life of the believer are you ready for decrease and for creation hmm. prayer is the scriptural platform that gives the believer an opportunity to make decrease and to create possibilities in your life that it is possible to make to be what was not through the power of decrease and that in prayer this is very very powerful job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 it says that you will also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you who is the you the one who made the decree not the one who needs the result the one who made the decree you shall also declare a thing and it shall be established unto you so light will shine on your ways numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 1 4 and then 28 say unto them as i leave saith the lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so will i do unto you just as you have spoken just as you have spoken can i tell you it is not only god you speak to you speak to things in prayer the character of faith according to the pauline revelation is that is in the similitude of how god behaves and that he can call things to be that were not he can call things and make things to appear that were not decrease and creation I hope you realize that creation has not stopped you would not be an effective Christian to believe that creation has stopped mm -mm. the fact that God rested does not mean creation stopped we can make things to appear that is not my goodness this is powerful we can make things to appear that is not we can call things we can call realms we can call dimensions we can call possibilities that is not yet within your space you don't need to look for them what you are looking for is also looking for you you just need to know how to call it to you hallelujah in prayer you can make decrees in prayer you can create possibilities right from where you are you can create a life of beauty and a life of glory in prayer this is very powerful it's an advantage that puts everybody at the same position that regardless my limitations territorially regardless my limitations by reason of my background 
the prayer ministry if understood can veto those limitations and call into my life something i was not born with and call into my life something my certificate did not carry i can call possibilities into my life you have to believe this so there is no need you see this was what apostle james was teaching and we'll wrap up with that one he said from whence come wars and rumors of wars and all of these things he says it comes from the loss that is in your heart it comes as a token of the frustration you have for not having results and he said it is unnecessary because everyone can ask and receive so there is no need to be jealous there is no need to be angry at another man's result there is a possibility to also attract same to your life hallelujah Even God, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not. Hold on. He never said the things that do not exist. Be not means it's not within your frame of sight. Every single bone from the army that disintegrated in Ezekiel 37 was still there. But it was just scattered beyond the scope of sight. Under a certain condition, it came back not every condition listen to me under a certain condition everything can come your assignment is to use prophetic words to direct your results and your answers to your place when you make decrees listen carefully when you make decrees and you create possibilities and the raw material for that creation is the word of god remember the bible says john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning and then verse 3 says that all things how many things all things it didn't say all spiritual things it says all things that means the unit of every physical material is not an atom it is the word of god science has only exhausted itself all things were made by I him and he said without him message. without him means he outside of his influence himself. was not Shares anything made as that was made to help them bless. check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel Comment on it. So I like can it. call to my life. See you on our next video. When you look at Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord. Grant me the discipline. Grant me the spirit. And as we pray, pray with this understanding that in prayer you are evolving. You are evolving. You know how a snake molts? There's something called molting. When a snake wants to leave its former self into a newer self, it will subject itself through the process of molting. It will shed off the old skin so when you look at the size of the old skin that is no longer the size of the new snake that is the former self the confused you can't distant shores and the islands will see your light listen as it rises on us Distant shores and the islands will see your love. Right from where you are, you can lift up your eyes and begin to see the possibilities that are contained in scripture a life of dignity and honor and glory, a life that is invincible, results like chariots following you. The good hand of God and his mercy upon your life it is from that standpoint you approach Abba in prayer 
and then now the bible gives us the advantage in the person of the holy spirit he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth i will not leave you comfortless he says i will send one who will walk with you in this journey for the bible says we have a limitation and the limitation he calls it our infirmity in romans chapter 8 he says for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to that means he, god recognizes the fact that our growth is gradual but there are things you need now you may not have all the knowledge bank to to engage effectively the holy ghost comes as an advocate as an intercessor who can pray the will of the father accurately through you the bible calls him a helper and that he can help our infirmity the word infirmity there is not sickness it is the limitations that come by reason of wearing a mortal body dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kata Branda Katapa Kotos Koto Brekateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.